Well, good morning, folks. It's uh, Thursday morning. This is Dylan Talks Tone, which means this is the live FAQ thing that we do every week and chat about a talk topic for a little bit. Uh, I am out and about mobile today. So if the quality is a little bit different, then uh, that's why. I'll explain that to you in a minute. For those of you who uh, are new to the channel, we have guitar tech stuff every week and if you're missing this for some reason you can watch it in replay you know obviously um if you want to get your question featured on this channel one of uh on this faq we do it every thursday you can do two things one you can ask it in the comments but a lot of times when this thing gets going it really gets ripping so and I can't see them all. So you can either uh, use a super chat, which will bump you to the top of the list, or um, you can go over to Patreon some other time during the week and, a and ask uh, all of our patrons at Patreon over there can ask questions and, um, you know, be able to do that stuff. And then basically I prioritize those questions, even if you can't make it to watch it live, because I know a lot of people can't. So. Um, that's, that's how this whole live FAQ thing works. Usually I have a topic to go along with that. Today is a little different. So, and I'll just give you a little, uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, maybe for those of you that aren't, that don't really understand what's going on. Obviously I'm sitting in my Jeep. Um, we have been living with my in-laws for the last, well, since we sold our house in October or whatever. And so obviously it's not my space, so I don't have 100% control of it, which I mean, obviously it's fine. I really appreciate them allowing us to stay with them. So we sold our house. Uh, we're making some moves. We're working on some things this weekend. So I'm really excited. I don't wanna say what it is yet. So hopefully um, uh, those, those things will move ahead and we will have our own space again. Um, and you will see some more consistency to our shooting or maybe less, I'm not sure uh stay tuned for for that so we're really excited about it but uh in the interim like the bug guy's coming this morning and he's going to be clunking around the house and i just didn't want to make a video there live with you all so that's why we ended up doing this whole thing so it's sort of you know it's one of those things where we have to do what we have to do for a little while so that's why you're seeing uh, a little bit different and where we're shooting and you know that kind of stuff but it's fun because it gets me um it gets me out and it gets my kind of imagination for shooting uh, out a little bit too. So let's go ahead and get into some of these FAQ questions that have come in. First, we're gonna start over on Patreon. Um, and hang on, let me grab this really quick. I have my computer with me, so I'm using it. Um, I have a hotspot in the car and so we're this is working all right so uh we did a patreon video uh you can go over to patreon.com slash dylan talks tone you can watch it we did a little kind of behind the scenes of how we're shooting videos now obviously it's changing a lot like i was just mentioning everything's a lot minimized it's a lot smaller we don't have the whole big studio we used to have so we did a kind of just a behind the scenes if you go watch that video and you're interested in me doing a little bit diet deeper dive into some of that stuff let me know but a question that came from that uh, thanks for the rundown. This, of course, begs the question, what editing software do you use to produce your videos? Um, I use Adobe Premiere for the video part. I also use uh, Studio One, um, PreSona Studio One for the audio a lot of times. But lately, it's been super basic. Like, so for these uh, A-B tests that we've been doing, I keep the audio very, very basic. Um, I just record it straight with no processing or anything straight into the computer. Um, and then I may, well, actually with that, I didn't do anything. Sometimes some of the audio, depending on like the dialogue and stuff. So the AB tests, I don't do anything with those just go straight in because we want those to be as straight and clean and easy as possible. And, and actually as accurate as possible for the tests that we're doing. Right? So, we don't do any like post processing on that. Um, but I explained in that video, like what effects we use, like in the Kemper and stuff and how that works. Uh, so 
there is that. Um, Big Shoots asks, oh, let me finish this question and I'll get right to you, uh, Mr. Big Shoots. Thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. So um, the audio wise, if we want to process any sort of like compression on my voice or whatever, that's the only time I ever really use it. Um, we do a little bit of audio processing sometime and some normalization audio wise. And I use Adobe, whatever the Adobe Audition. I use Adobe Audition for that because I can send the video file over to Adobe Audition. Then Adobe Audition does what it does or I do what I want it to do in there and then it sends it back. So it's like a seamless uh, operation between the two and it really, really works well. Uh, big Shoots, let's talk to you. What causes a pickup to be more or less noisy? Um, <clears throat> well, this is a tough one to explain in a short period of time. First of all, there's a couple of different kinds of noises. Can I hold your question? I've got a question that's related to this. So we're going to hold your question for a couple of minutes um, because I've got a Patreon question that almost goes exactly in line with that. So let me get to that in just a minute because yeah, the hard mount versus pickup pick guard mount. We're gonna we're gonna mush those two questions together because it's a very interesting one. Let me get one more other one out of the way and then we'll get to that because it's or a couple more and then we'll get to that because that's it works together. Um, I saw someone say that carbon fiber guitars are prone to some kind of electrical feedback. Is this true? Also, what are the benefits and downsides of carbon fiber acoustic and electric guitars? Um, I don't think everybody's figured them out totally yet. There's not, I mean, you can actually, if they don't have um, carbon fiber, you can you can use it as shielding actually, if it doesn't have the coating on it. So you can ground to it. I know this from other stuff that I've built, not guitars with carbon fiber. Um, it can be conductive. The thing is, is that it's it would end up just being quieter. There's really no downside to it. Um, you know, of course, with an acoustic guitar, you got to engineer it right to sound good. Uh, truth be told, if somebody would give me enough money for my breed love, I would probably sell it and buy a McPherson acoustic. That is on my, I am, I'm almost there. Uh, and buy a McPherson carbon fiber acoustic. Have you ever come across counterfeit CTS pots? Uh, I have not, but I don't claim to be an expert on manufacturing processes of every one of them i don't i i know most pots either come from china or taiwan but i don't i can't tell you other than that <clears throat> at this moment i mean i know a little bit more about it but i don't want to say because i don't really really know um let's see can i use a two-wire humbucker into the bridge of a strat with a five-way not looking for coil splitting or tapping. I just want the humbucker in the bridge. Yes, you can do that. That'd be freaking amazing. In fact, uh, we should have a video coming out. Uh, well, there's a video coming out on Monday where a uh, custom build that we built um, that we did that. The video on Monday that's coming out is about tremolo stability. And so, and I used the custom guitar that we just built for a client in Florida. I'm actually delivering it to Florida this weekend. Um, and it is that. And then his secondary question to that is, could I possibly solder in quick connectors and leave pigtails soldered in the guitar and make it plug and play swap instead of soldering every time? Or will that add resistance to the circuit and affect the overall tone? No, I mean, yes, you can do that. And no, it won't make any difference. Uh, that's a really cool thing. So uh, if you remind me, or I will try to remember to, to post a link maybe somewhere I'll post maybe I'll do it on this video I guess on this live video in the comments afterwards I will post a video of some connectors that we use uh, we have a client in California who asked us to make him a, an entire line of pick guards for strat with a whole bunch of different he owns a studio and he wanted to have a whole bunch of different combinations of pick art of pick cards with pickups in it and we used 
uh, these little gold connectors. They are for radio control car batteries. That's what they're for. And they it worked amazingly. It was so cool. Um, it worked really, really cool. And actually, on a Strat, you don't have to do anything quick connect except for the output jack. The output jack is the only thing that needs to, you know, because everything's on the pick card. So then you just make one, make the wires come out from the output jack, you know, up into the cavity. And there's enough room in there. And you just put these two little connectors on there. And then from the volume pot in the ground, you just put this other connector on the other side. And then you can unplug the pick card and take it out super cool um it ended up being a very cool experiment and i think he called me he texted me a couple weeks ago asking for another one we did a whole bunch of of neat pick guard like um you know normal single 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 we did two p90s we did some filter trons we did some humbuckers single single hum like a whole bunch of different combinations uh that was really cool <clears throat> so the last question is uh does that that he that we have from patreon is does it matter whether the pickups are hard mounted or whether they are mounted to the pick guard to the sound of the electric guitar this is a really controversial thing because you're going to get all into the tone wood garbage um but there's a couple of things that we can narrow down here that I'll just tell you <laughs> technically. Anytime you have, so when an, the way electric guitar works is you have the pickup sitting in one spot and you have the string moving above it. Anytime you have motion of the pickup in relation to the string back and forth like this, or this way or this way or whatever any vibration of the pickup in relation to the string it is going to affect the accuracy of the intention of the note that you picked with your hand does that make sense so um we all imagine that when we pick this note it's going to sound a certain way well if there is any motion in any of the parts other than in the string to the pickup in relation to itself it will affect it yeah um does it really matter no because you establish a sound based on whatever you're doing and that is that this is an interesting question that i think tonewood snobs and guitar snobs in general ask but don't really think about it when they ask it because for example really vintagey guys okay and i am one don't get me don't get me twisted on this i love vintage guitars however i don't think if you give me 10 grand to spend right now i'm not going to spend it on a vintage guitar i have far more important and more fun things that i could do with that ten thousand dollars than have a telecaster that is only marginally different than something i could buy at a store however when someone hands me a vintage guitar, I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever right now in the moment. I love it. So don't get me twisted on that. I love that stuff. <clears throat> However, the people that say that it ruins the tone or it doesn't sound the same if you hard mount a guitar versus are the same people that are like vintage freaks. Well, Old Telecasters were hard mounted. Um, the neck pickups, all of them, they were all hard mounted. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody cared. There was no difference, um, except it was a pain in the butt to adjust them because you had to take the pick guard off. So this is one of those things where well, people will make it up in their head and be like, well, there's this difference. Is there? I mean, we're going to do a video on this. I'm actually, I'm going to do a video on this. Um, I need a strat to do it with. I don't have a strat. Well, I have my strat, but I'm not going to do it to my strat. I need a strat to do it with, and we will do hard mount versus pick guard mount. And you will hear and see that there is no appreciable difference to it. Um, 
And this is going to be one of those things where people are going to get a comment and be like, you didn't do it right. There was too much YouTube compression. I need to have studio headphones and like be in an isolation chamber so I can hear the difference. Well, if you need to take go to that much work to hear the difference, is there a difference? No. You're just trying to make up a difference in your head. Now, getting to our super chat question, what makes a pickup to more or less noisy? This can be related because remember what we just said, that if you have the pickup here and the string above it and anything moves in the pickup, then it introduces something that you did not intend to pick with your hand. So motion inside the pickup internally can cause that. Now, that basically just means microphonic, but it doesn't, microphonic pickups don't always do exactly the same thing. So we talk about noisiness. As far as actual noise like hum, there's a lot of debate on this, but our pickups are really, really quiet. Uh, even our single coils are super quiet. Even our P90s are actually really quiet. I believe, and this is just, and it does have some scientific merit. There is some things that go along with it, um, but I don't necessarily know how to test this and I don't know enough. I, I can't, I, I just don't know. So I'm not gonna tell you it's a fact. However, I do know that I can control the capacitance of a pickup. And what that means is I can, how we lay the coil, we can make the capacitance of the pickup, you know, it's only a couple of picofarads or a couple hundred picofarads, um, higher or lower. And the lower the capacitance of the pickup, it does infect the inductance because you have to make it a little more baggy. Um, so there's a give and take there that you have to find a balance in. But the lower the capacitance of the pickup, in my experience, with the stuff that we build anyway that I've experimented with myself, uh, the lower it is, the quieter the pickup is. But you can't make it too low, otherwise then you're making the pickup so baggy that the inductance is off and it doesn't do what you want it to do. So there's a balance there. But I will tell you, if you play my pickups next to a Seymour Duncan P90, Minor quieter every time. Um, that being said, I'm not a huge single coil hum snob either. Like, I don't care about it. I, I'll play whatever. Um, I don't want them to be noisy, but I don't care about it. So that's the hum part. I mean, I'll play a guitar with single coils. It doesn't bother me. Um, that's the hum part. Now let's talk about the other internal noises that a pickup can make or have. You can have... Um, a lot of other things. So uh, typically a microphonic pickup, people think of that as like a squeal when the cover on a humbucker gets loose, right? But it's not always just that. A lot of times there's other internal parts uh, that become microphonic and they don't just squeal. They get noisy and they start to in they start to induce other vibrations. It's like, it's like if you took a microphone, that's why they, they become microphonic. You put a microphone on a table and like you roll it back and forth and it makes that noise. It's because you're introducing vibrations into loose parts that are talking to each other, uh, that are moving in relation to each other. So here's what happens. You get a humbucker and the bobbins come loose from the base plate or, um, I've seen a lot of times too, like in cheaper pickups where the slugs are loose and they kind of like slide back and forth. Well, every time those things move or shake around, that slug is the magnetic part of the pickup. Well, it's the ferrous part of the pickup. And so it'll move around and then that causes inductance to happen other than the string. If the little retainer bar on the bottom moves around, it's magnetic too. So it'll cause an inductance to happen other than the string. So you're causing all these little, um, you're causing metal to move around inside the pickup that's not the string. Therefore you're introducing noise. So that's what happens. And and they so they start to get you know clunky and noisy. And as a result of that, 
other noises then get introduced into the guitar. This is one of the reasons, this is what I think too, one of the things that kind of fuels the pickup debate or the, the whole tone wood debate thing is uh, the vibration of the, the body, um, especially with microphonic pickups. Like you can go um, to like, you could play an unpotted guitar and it will sound different um, than a potted guitar because you are getting all these vibrations from all these other places. It's actually kind of fun. When we pot our pickups, um, just to give you a, a little insight, like at Dylan Talks Tone, we build pickups, we don't vacuum pot them. Um, I, I don't like to pot the coil all the way to the center. That's just been a practice that we've always done and we've always been that way. Um, people will, there's a big kind of like debate also on the internet about uh, whether the tone of an unpotted pickup versus a potted pickup is the same. It's not necessarily the tone, um, but there's a liveliness that comes from an unpotted pickup because of all of those other vibrations that are happening. Yeah, it's not as accurate, but it's just kind of fun um because you have to chase it you have to be on top of it if you've ever been to see um somebody like jd simo so um he came to my house one time and we were playing stuff super loud and he brought his 1960 les paul and really super loud in my living room and really loud <laughs> he plays loud he literally takes every tube amp and at the time he was playing a Marshall and he just like dimed all the knobs and then just used his volume knob on his guitar. And he doesn't, at that time, he wasn't using any effects or anything, just a cable. And so he would literally like walk around the room to effect. So, and then he was playing one of my tellies and he was doing the same thing. He was playing one of my tellies and we had our Fuchs amps and they're just super wide open. And he's walking around my living room and he's literally like, the way he faces and then he faces towards it and then he walks away and then he come back like he's literally using the room and the feedback and the noises that the guitar is making um to create his sound and it was just this liveliness that if you really pop a pickup and you remove all of that uh you just don't have so i don't know if it's necessarily a tone thing as much as it is it's just a, a feel thing with the guitar, I think, um, with potted pickups. I like not potting them. The problem is they do get noisy and clunky. So what we do is we pot our pickups the old fashioned way, literally in a crock pot. And I watch it visibly. Uh, when the bubbles stop, I pull it out. And we've taken uh, pickups apart afterwards and all we're doing is we're trying to dampen the loose parts in the pickup itself and not the coil. So that just gives you a little insight how we do it here. Uh, here, hang on, I, my screen went dead. Let's see if we can go look at some more of these. Um, any opinions on bar single coils versus pole pieces and many maybe different heights? Uh, I like, I like me some I like me some, uh, hang on. I feel like my laptop just came unhooked. My laptop just came unhooked from my, what you call? All right, well, I guess that's that. I guess I won't be able to ask anymore. That's dumb. Hang on, let's fix this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're good here. I lost my hotspot to my laptop, so. Is what the problem is, so now I can't see the questions that you're asking me. And I don't know why. It is not working. So anyway, hopefully that answered some questions for you today. 
uh, do me a favor and check out all of our YouTubes. Oh, hang on. Here we go. We're back. We can keep going. One second. Let me re... Let me redo this. Okay, cool. Um, hiding a pickup under the pick guard. Yep, we've done it. Uh, you're really far from the pickup, and a lot of times it doesn't work that well. Uh, let's see. So these bar versus single coil pickups. I need to do a comparison video. Um, oh, and thank you to the viewer that sent me uh, some lace sensors to cut up. So I got some lace sensors in the mail yesterday. So there's a video, it'll probably be about two weeks or something before you'll see that, but we got, um, and I'm probably over on Patreon, I'm probably gonna actually do a video where we when I'm actually cutting them apart. A lot of the times I kind of have to like, to shoot the video, we just have to, to show it different, but I'll probably do like a behind the scenes thing over there on Patreon. Um, and we're gonna do a video about bar versus pole pieces. Um, there is an accuracy difference. Obviously, the shape of the magnetic field is a little bit different. Um, the inductance properties of it are different. But again, a lot of people say, what's your opinion on them? I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, do you like the pickup? If you if it, you like how it sounds, then play it. You know what I mean? Um, my opinion kind of doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. Sounds like an idea for the next budget rewired guitar giveaway. Um, <clears throat> actually, I already bought the stuff for the 40,000 giveaway. Oh, crap. I was going to announce the giveaway for the, um, for all of the tools. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to post it on the Facebook or the, the YouTube timeline in about probably about 20 minutes or well it'll probably be a couple hours actually so by lunchtime today I'll just say that probably around lunchtime today I will have a name picked and announced for the giveaway for all the guitar stuff and I will put it um, I'll try to get in contact with that person I will try to get that done today I was gonna announce that this morning but because of this whole mix-up that we had at the house and I had to like leave right away and stuff and I just couldn't do it um how can I find your band's music online? I do not have uh, my band music online. We are not recorded. We do not, we have not recorded. Um, and honestly, I like I mentioned last week, I don't play that much anymore. I mean, I play all the time, but I don't play with a band uh, as much as I used to. Um, Probably over the next few weeks, the reasons for that will become more apparent uh, because we are really busy with what we are doing. Are there some benefits from non reverse wound, reverse polarity, single coil versus reverse wound, reverse polarity? Not really. Um, if you put it on a scope, you can sort of see a difference. But the people that tell you that they can tell a difference are lying every time. I've tried this many, many times. Um, uh, let's see. We got some tone with people in here. Okay. I'm going to call you out on this, Seanery. Body material certainly makes a difference in sound. That explains the difference between sound ho between hollow bodies, semi hollow bodies, and solid bodies. I have a hollow body. You can hear the air. A, no, you can't hear the air. B, you can't compare hollow body to a solid. You can't. So in that respect, what the guitar is made out of does make a difference. Yes. But body construction is a huge thing. Um, huge thing. Huge thing. We're actually... I'm working on a thing um, about semi-hollows too. But I don't know when it's going to come out. Because I'm, it's, I'm something I'm actually building. We're actually working on a construction concept for a guitar and I don't know if it's working the way I want it to work. I'm not 100% sure yet. So I have not said a whole lot about it, but there may be a video about it. Uh, do you know amps as well as you know pickups? I'm a budget bedroom player and would love to know an expert's thoughts on awesome budget amps 
for example, the mono price tube amps. Um, I do not have, I will tell you, I know what I like. Um, I'm not an amp guy. I will tell you that if you're going to spend two or three or 500 bucks on a cheap Chinese tube amp, I would not do it. I would buy any of the boss solid state stuff. The boss katana, obviously, for $200. That thing's freaking amazing. The other thing I would buy also is the other boss one that I can't think of the name of. I'll put it in the comments later. It's the newer one. It's more like 500 bucks, I think, or a little less, maybe. I would buy some of the newer tech solid state amps before I ever even touched a Chinese tube amp. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a given. I would, that's not even a conversation for me. Next tone. Thank you. Boss, next tone. That is the thing. Those amps are so cool and so good. One of my buddies is a, um, he's a, He's an artist for Boss. They, he goes around to, like, he plays at Nam. His name's Scott Gaylor. And he um, lives in Florida. And he's told me about the technology in that stuff. And it is so good. And what they're doing and how they're, you know, all the complaints that people have about solid state amps uh, are just based on memories of 1985, to tell you the truth. We all had PV Bandits, man. Remember PV Bandits? Like, when I was a kid, in the 80s like that was a, a pv bandit was the jam but it was terrible when it came to overdrive and semi overdrive and on the edge of crunch you know what i mean it was just terrible um so that's we're not in the 80s anymore and what they're doing with some of this class a b over digital stuff is really really and class d is really 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 good um, I would totally buy a Boss Next Tone. In fact, I may buy a Boss Next Tone, actually. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. I, I don't have room for amps right now because of our life changes that were. And again, over the next few weeks, some of that will probably be coming to this YouTube channel, even though it's not super relevant to Guitar Tone. But I want to tell the story and I want everybody to know what's going on. Um, if you're wondering about, like, if it's me or my wife or not, no, we're amazing. Uh, we have actually just made some changes. So, and we're, we're doing some stuff different. Um, yeah, the Roland uh, Blues Cube is another one. Obviously, it's a Boss product as well. I personally I have no problem with this, and I would never spend three or 400 bucks on a Chinese amp when, uh, tube amp, when these things are out there. They're so good. Um... You know, my solid state amp was so bad, not even changing the tubes made a difference. Exactly. Um, and I think Blackstar's got some pretty cool stuff too. I'm not as familiar with Blackstar because I don't know anybody there and I haven't had a chance to play their new stuff, but um, the boss thing, because I got a buddy that is in it. And I, and I bought, excuse me, I bought um, a Katana 50 for a bunch of YouTube videos like maybe a year and a half ago. And I sold it, but because uh, I didn't need it. But it was really, really good, uh, super good. Black Star Selectable Tube Emulation. Yeah, man, the stuff is awesome. Um, the stuff is awesome. The stuff is awesome. You guys are uh, killing it with all these questions. I really appreciate it. Um, I have an Ultra 3 Les Paul and a 339 out of phase and grounding wiring issue. Do you know what they did wrong? Yeah, they probably wired something backwards. Sounds like something's backwards. Take that thing back. Hold your guitar techs and your guitar stores accountable for the quality of work that they do. Make sure that you do that. Awesome. You guys, this has been super fun. Um... I don't see any new super chats popped in here. Thank you so much to everybody that's been supporting us on Patreon. I'm trying to put more content over there to make that five bucks a month a worthwhile endeavor for you because we are using that money. Just so you know what we're doing over on Patreon. We're using that money. Uh, I'm saving it up right now. I haven't actually, it's actually still on Patreon. Like I haven't even taken it out into my bank yet. 
um, um, for probably two more months at the rate we're going. Because I think we're at like 10 patrons over there. It's not very many. So uh, I want to say there might be like 60 or 70 bucks in there. What I really want to do, <laughs> what I really want to use that money for, and it's going to take a couple hundred bucks, I think, is I want to buy one of those Paul Reed Smith super fancy new pickups. But they're expensive. And I'm going to cut it apart and it's going to be useless afterwards. Or I might make it useful and give it to somebody. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> well, let me just say that. I'm going to buy one of those fancy PRS pickups. I'm going to take it apart for a video. I'm going to put it back together and make it usable again. And then I'll probably just give it away. That's what we're going to do. But I'm using that Patreon money right now to save up for that. Because it's not a cheap endeavor for a YouTube experiment. So that's what I'm using it for. So thanks so much to everybody who's supporting us. Thanks Big Shoots for the uh, the what you call the super chat this morning. Um, yeah, man, this has been fun. I appreciate it, everybody. Phil McKnight has been talking about a massive pickup shootout. I would love to do that with him. That would be really fun, actually. I've reached out to him to co to collaborate, but I don't know how much he he does that. I'd like to collaborate with some other YouTubers this year. That'd be really super fun. Um, hey, check out Ecta Spaceport Invitational Motorcycles. I will do that. Uh, let's see. All right, man. You guys, this has been great. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not, make sure you check out our Patreon over there. Like I said. A lot more like behind the scenes stuff we're hoping to share over there I've got a few videos up I actually uploaded a couple of videos this week um, and that's it thanks for hanging out this live thing is cool and I think we will be uh... next week we will be pretty much in the same situation uh, this weekend I'm hoping to sort out where we live I hope and I'm about 80% sure that it's going to happen. And then next week we will be in transition, but we will still be on schedule. I will still see you next Thursday. And then probably the week after that, you will see where we live. So super exciting. Super exciting. Really enjoyed the interaction. Dude, I love this. I love this interaction. This is so much fun to me. Um, and people ask me why we use the premieres. I hate premieres. I don't know why you hate premieres. If you're bothered by a timeline, I don't know. You need to probably like get some medication or see somebody for that because <clears throat> it's not that irritating actually. Um, but I really, really enjoy uh, the interaction even when we're watching the videos as they come out because if people have questions, what you guys don't realize and don't maybe don't see is when I'm, when we're doing one of these premieres and you all are going in the comments and we're talking or when you're not talking and you're just thinking about stuff and then we I, I go back and I look at all this stuff and this is where we get the content for our videos so I really really appreciate um, this interaction and I think it's one of the cool things about this YouTube channel and I hope it continues to grow because I want to um, kind of continue to base what we do on this YouTube channel around the direct interaction with the people that watch the videos and that is all of you. I don't like to use the word fans. I think that's stupid. Um, I would like to think that if I ran into any of you and we had a beer right now, even if you were mean to me in the comments, that we would just still hang out and be friends and probably end up playing guitar later, right? Like that's not a fan. That's a, we're just, we're just all guitar people. And so I appreciate everybody, and I think it's really cool. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next week. Uh, Monday, we have a new video coming out about tremolo uh, stability. I already did it. It's done, um, and it's ready to come out. Uh, make sure you check out our other YouTube channel, Music and Mascara. There is a link in the comments to this video to it. Um, and there is a Patreon for that, too. That's telling some more of the story about what we're doing with our life right now. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. We'll see you all next week.